Hi, uh, my name is Daniel. I am an astrophotographer. Um, I have received quite a lot of questions regarding my gear and my observatory. Um, so I was thinking of giving you guys a tour uh, inside my observatory. Uh, I am going to do this in English because I have quite a lot of uh, international followers, so no Swedish this time. Come along. Okay, so we have went inside my observatory um, and I am going to give you a quick tour uh, of the gear. Um, let's start from the base up. Uh, this is a 250mm uh, steel pipe. Uh, it's uh, bolted down to about a ton of concrete in the ground. Um, and it's also isolated from the wooden floor, uh, so I don't have any vibrations. Uh, on top of that, uh, it's the mount. Uh, it's a ASA DDM85 standard uh, from Austro System Austria. Uh, it can carry uh, up to 80 kilos of load. Um, what is special with this mount is that it has uh, direct drive uh, servo motors, so uh, it will track the objects uh, quite precisely, so there is no need for uh, a guiding telescope or anything. Okay, so uh, this is the main telescope. Uh, it's a 10 inch uh, F4 uh, carbon astrograph from a telescope service. Uh, it is a Pyrex mirror in the bottom uh, that collects the light, the starlight, going in this direction. And about here, it's a secondary mirror. It's tilted uh, 45 degrees, uh, angling the light to the camera array. Um, the reason it's made in carbon fiber, or the reason I choose the carbon fiber version, is that it's very thermally stable. So the focal points won't be affected um, during the night of imaging uh, regarding the temperature. Um, so that's the main reason. Um, the other reason uh, is because of the light and uh, very stiff. Let's go through the imaging train here. Um, we will start off with the focuser unit. Uh, this is the focuser unit. It's a true three inch uh, focuser from Starlight. Uh, it's a Starlight Feather Touch focuser. Uh, it's uh, quite sturdy. Um, to be able to uh, move the focuser draw tube back and forth. Uh, I've installed the Prima Luce Lab Sesto sensor. This is the first version, so it's not the newly released one with the Wi-Fi capabilities. Uh, it is actually quite good. I was astonished over the, first of all, the build quality. Um, it's aluminum. Uh, the installation was very, very easy. Um, it's fast and it's uh, strong um, and it's uh, utterly precise. Uh, I mess measured it with a caliper and it's um, it hits the the right spot uh, every time, right on the hundreds of millimeters. So yeah. Um, Inside the focuser, um, it's uh, attached a, a reducer and corrector lens. Um, every Newton style telescope needs a corrector uh, to be able to correct the curvature. Uh, it's a natural phenomenon that, uh, that every Newton telescope has. Um, this round black uh, circle. Uh, is the filter wheel. Um, 
to be able to shoot the narrow band images with uh, H alpha uh, oxygen sulfur and also the red green blue filters and the light uh, filter the luminous um, to be able to get those color images I need to shoot through different filters uh, mounted in this filter carousel is the Astrodon uh, filters and uh, last but not least uh, the camera itself uh, it's a monochrome uh, camera from Attic uh, it's the Attic uh, 694 or 460 excuse me the Attic 460 EX I am going to explain uh, the importance of uh, getting the right spacing between the corrector lens that is mounted inside the draw tube here and the camera um, for every corrector lens there is a precise spacing that you will need to get absolutely right to be able to get uh, the right focus. In this particular case between this color and the camera chip uh, it needs to be 61 millimeter and uh, the filter will add one millimeter to the light path. So 62 millimeters from this point to the front of the camera ship that is mounted inside here. To be able to do this, uh, you have to mount spacer rings between the parts going here. So basically, it's the color of the corrector lens. It's uh, a reduced step ring down from M68 to M48 and added three millimeters of length here. The filter wheel is taken up 29.3 millimeters. I have then attached a tilting unit uh, and between the tilting unit and the camera there are M42 spacer rings. Okay, so we have gone through the telescope and also the imaging train uh, which is on the other side of the telescope right now. Um, I was thinking that I was going to show you the controller for the dew heater and also the uh, on and off switches for the camera etc. So um, during the night uh, it can collect some dew on the secondary mirror uh, and to be able to cope with that you need to heat the back side of the mirror um, and that is done um, through this, it's a Pegasus Astro pocket power box. It's a truly champ, uh, it's work flawlessly, uh, very easy to handle and mount, um, great build quality. And this particular unit is in plastic. Uh, I've seen they just released some information on the runner up of this. Uh, it's going to be made in aluminum, uh, it's looking astonishing. Um, so uh, this wire here goes through the secondary mirror. I have just uh, fitted the cable between the telescope uh, tube and my light trial. Um, it's also a sensor for measuring temperature and humidity so it can control the power output to the heater. Uh, I have also attached a fan to the back of the telescope to draw uh, some air through it uh, so it doesn't build up uh, moisture on the main mirror. Um, and also you have some uh, power outputs that is uh, controllable on and off uh, through the computer and uh, it's working very very good. Okay so this is the computer I'm using to control my uh, my setup. Um, it uh, basically contains a lot of different programs and there's one program here to control the Pegasus Astrobox. Um, I have a controller for uh, the roof of the observatory. Uh, I'm running less the dome. Uh, I have a software for uh, measuring the humidity and uh, temperature uh, pressure um, is from uh, Blue Astro. 
and also the controller window for the mount. Um, this mount doesn't need guiding. Uh, so basically what it's doing instead, it's uh, taking a lot of pictures um, throughout the, the path of the object uh, that I'm shooting for that night. And it's knowing where to, to correct for uh, misalignment um, so I get a precise uh, path uh, during the, the night. Um, it has an act uh, accuracy of a, of a sub arc second. Um, I easily get five minutes of uh, exposures uh, without uh, without a problem at all. So uh, it's working very well. Uh, I have also a planetaria program. Uh, right now I'm running Card Seal, uh, and uh, the program for. Uh, the camera is uh, Maxim uh, DL. Um, all those program uh, is controlled by one program uh, during the whole night. Uh, that program is also uh, made by Astro System Austria. Uh, it's called Sequence. You basically load uh, all your uh, imaging targets you want to shoot. Uh, you tell it uh, which filter you want to use, exposure time, binning, um, all of that stuff. Um, it will then open the observatory roof for you and uh, uh, cool down the camera and start uh, imaging um, when you want to. Um, it also controls uh, the focus motor. Uh, right now I will set it to make a new autofocus routine, routine uh, every 45 minutes. Uh, the autofocus routine takes about one to one and a half minutes. So yeah, that's uh, basically it. Uh, I'm not sitting here uh, during the night. Uh, I can also remote control uh, this setup. Um, uh, but I don't have to uh, monitor it at all if I don't have to. Uh, after the Photography session is done. Uh, the program parks the telescope and closes the roof automatically so I can happily go to sleep.